don't think consumers differentiate between 85, 95, and 90. People only differentiate between zero and hundred. At the top, there's only room for one, right? I believe in India, 80% of celebrity usage in advertising that I see is not thought. Creating is easy. What to create is a million-dollar question. Hi. You're listening to Marketing with Vani, in which I speak to marketing gurus. Together, we decode how marketing works in the real world to grow your business. Today, you can't not have YouTube in your digital marketing mix. Every founder today is asking, "Why can I not put my TV ad on YouTube as is and make it unskippable so that my viewers are forced to watch?" To answer this question, I'm speaking with Karan Amin, a path-breaking creator, winner of the Cannes Gold Lion, and a passionate digital advocate for almost two decades. So, Karan, I want to ask you, since you're a digital guy, you think digitally. I want to know from you. Too often, you know, clients say that the TVC that we've made, let's just use the TVC as is and put it on YouTube. and make it non skippable because agar if, if we make it non skippable then the viewer will definitely have to see it and i'm happy to pay for a non skippable version why can we not do that what is the logic for that not being a good idea why can i not make a tvc and just put it on youtube as is and make it non skippable so basically tv you know as a set format you are limited hmm. to playing a video on a television when you hmm. make it as a tvc and similarly mm-hmm. when you take that you know tvc to youtube i mean you well you you can definitely run your tvc on youtube or you can put it on facebook even on instagram you can just upload your tvc as is that's what most brands do but however all the engagement they will get is similar comments if somebody ends up watching the whole thing also when you load it as a unskippable ad people are on digital largely to see content to enjoy content to watch content if you give them an ad which is unskippable automatically they are hating your brand a lot more versus even having 1% of likeliness for it because your ad is worked as an ad to interrupt their experience of the platform i would say the larger issue as to why you do not use youtube as your television medium because you want to rather use youtube to engage you know to tell a larger story or to build this whole content game that youtube is about okay so tell me when you talked about content karan help me understand should i as a creator should i be thinking differently about content for youtube versus tv of course because youtube has a lot of different uh, media formats youtube has a 6 second pre roll which is an unskippable you can tell your entire story in 6 seconds you have managed to tell the consumer about your brand without hampering their user experience and i think that's a great way that some brands have started to use youtube also youtube has other formats like now youtube has shorts youtube also has a stories version just like uh, facebook and instagram has youtube even gives you an option of you know using things like end cards earlier mm. they had this thing called annotations but now they have end cards where basically you can actually lead the user onto almost like a storytelling treasure hunt of sorts where at the end of the video mm. the user can choose between you know should i follow the story by clicking on this or should i follow the story on clicking by this so actually you can do a lot more with youtube also youtube gives you a lot of other features like live like facebook does where you can actually have content which goes live and have people interacting with that content and mm. interacting with the content with comments and getting live feedback from users as your content is playing out so in mm-hmm. fact it's actually evolving as you go ahead and there are a lot of even content creators uh, vloggers that you use youtube as a platform to build their what they're all about so i think for a brand to use youtube you rather use youtube for what its strengths are which is you know mm-hmm. the fact that it's got great amount of content creators a great way to tell mm-hmm. stories in shorter formats especially mm-hmm. the 6 second unskippable because you're you're actually able to communicate your brand message without hampering the user's experience i think the core thing is how do i not hamper the user's experience of the platform very nice and tell me youtube apart i mean both of us sound like we've been paid by youtube to do this <laughs> <laughs> i wish that were the case but never mind that but youtube apart for any form of digital advertising how should one think about digital as a medium versus tv as a medium maine 30 second tvc banaya why can i not chapo it on online that's what i said you can definitely chapo it you can put that tvc on 
but then you know what happens a brand say for example uploads its tvc on facebook or youtube then the huh. brand is like uh, why no one is watching my ad on youtube why is my <laughs> ad on youtube watched only 5000 times and now that is where the fallout happens because you've uploaded on youtube thinking that everybody is on youtube consumers on facebook so i'll not put on tv i'll put on youtube and facebook but nobody huh. is going to watch your ad because a it is an ad and youtube right. does not like serve ads just like that because it's like the way it's serving content and therefore yeah. you need to promote it you need to boost it by boosting yeah. or promoting it what are you doing and in essence as a brand you are ending up advertising your advertising versus hmm. advertising your brand <laughs> a person a yeah. user now yeah. is clicking on an ad and when he clicks yeah. on that ad he ends up watching an ad after yeah. that he wants to click on your link to come buy your product you have yeah. wasted his journey by giving him three clicks to end up watching an ad hmm. Hmm. what a disaster hmm. for a brand and what a waste <laughs> of media money because you have yeah. used media money to drive people to watch an ad yeah. on youtube or on facebook when you can actually yeah. use media money to get that guy to click on something to go fill a form enter his mobile number give you his email address or comment or talk about your brand or talk about your film that you made so literally taking you cannot take your tvc model and apply it to digital assets because all you will get is somebody if they click on an ad and watch your ad they'll end up liking your ad or you'll get mm. views but your video having 1 billion views is of no use if nobody bought your goddamn product yeah yeah so, so what is it about tv versus digital current i'm seeing the the monetary angle of promoting your film on youtube or facebook when you've done that you know you spent 1 crore rupees Or promoting a video on YouTube for it to get one million uh, likes, the barber right. on the road also spends one crore rupees. He'll also get one million likes. So what is the difference between your video having one million likes and one million views and a barber's video having one million views? Right. Yeah. So yeah. over here, you're saying we are treating the quality of the ad is not playing any role. I mean, the creative itself is not playing any role at all. It's just a function of the monies you put in. Now, tell me about the creative yeah. itself, Karan. Why is it that we consume creative on a TV like an ad? I mean, the consumer is the same. It's me who's yeah. watching TV. It's me who's staring at my mobile. Why is yeah. it that I'm watching TV and expecting an ad? And why is it that I'm staring at my mobile and not wanting to see an ad? That's because TV has been around for generations, and as you watched, you know, all kinds of things on TV, you are you know that there is an ad. You know, it's ah. always going to come. Like there's going to be a commercial break. and if you bought some really premium subscription like they have nowadays like a netflix for example you're not getting yeah. an ad there but all other channels there is an ad you watch kbc there is an ad you watch ipl there is an ad you watch anything any tv show on on tv there is an ad and people are mm. aware of that but mm. when you look at a mobile and that's when i say mobile first which is that mm. people are consuming content on a mobile phone They're using the internet or social media to consume content and content mm. is what drives a person onto mm. a mobile phone on onto the social platforms mm. the social platforms today as of today are now uh, monetizing their platforms because most platforms are free youtube is free facebook is free instagram is free so how do they make money the only mm. way that they make money is through advertising and, mm. uh, and creating these display opportunities for users but for brands but users hate ads it's common even before there was social media even before there was the internet when there was an ad coming on tv a lot of people were either changing the channel or muting the video and being digital a user is looking to you know for his content he's not looking for an ad if an ad plays the option the user has that option to scroll past it or just wait for the skip ad button and skip it everyone is looking for the skip ad button this is fantastic so now karan should we talk about uh, why shorter content works better on digital so i want to tell why? you the whole tvc thing and realize i didn't tell you this thing which is basically the fact that all your digital and social platforms have their own and all these features are linked like basically the user karan, behavior linked with these features becomes a lot more interesting a person engages with these features on various social and digital platforms and brands should be using these features to tell their stories in interesting ways when you use a platform for its strength and its features the consumer engagement is a lot higher and consumer conversion is a lot faster for example a 30 second ad playing on instagram or facebook the user will mostly scroll past it because any user can spot an ad from a mile away but you tell the same story in mute because on facebook a lot of users watch videos on mute and you know majority of users are just scrolling social on mute because they are at work or they are doing something and while they are doing something or they are waiting somewhere they have kept their phone on silent they are still in their phones people are in office meetings and they are in their phones and you don't know what they are up to but they are scrolling on mute 
and therefore there is mute storytelling so you know what's very interesting is that when you run your tvcs on facebook or youtube or even instagram you're not using what the platforms are known for or what the platform strengths are all the social plat especially like you know different platforms have different features like for example mm-hmm. facebook facebook automatically when you load a video on facebook facebook will run that video in mute because a lot of users on facebook watch videos on mute so a brand should actually embrace that and start telling their brand story in mute because if they played in mute there's a higher chance that the user will not scroll by it and watch it and spend time and engage with it so mute storytelling is very very big on facebook and facebook even tells brands to try and tell their story in mute similarly if you use instagram for its most watched feature which is reels and in reels you know stories are looping the story is told in a very interesting style or using a filter or using different features of that go into creating reels also what reels does is very powerful because in reels when you upload a reel you can actually reach into instagram's music library and take tracks from the music library to support your reel and all those tracks are popular music tracks in a normal sense in the normal world if you have to cut a tvc and then use a popular track you end up spending lakhs or even crores paying the royalties for that track but if you use that track from instagram reels you're getting it for free so why are brands not doing this why are brands not creating reels where they using these tracks and getting their story or getting their brand story told in a very interesting as well as you know native way of the platform which therefore would get their content a lot more shares and a lot more talkability when you upload tv ads on instagram or on facebook they get skipped they do not get shared but content made true to the platform gets talked about and gets shared very well said and the other bit since you talked about facebook on mute the other thing that we've also learned is that because facebook is held ransom to the speed at which your thumb scrolls the other thing is also that storytelling must be such that the most important message that you need to communicate on the brand should ideally be communicated even before your thumb can scroll it up a brand really needs to understand which is that when you make a tvc and you put that tvc on tv that tvc on tv is not playing only once right you bought a media plan and the person watching ipl will end up watching your tvc 100 times right but when you put that tvc on a facebook right mm. literally it is a single scroll for the user once the user sees it and scrolls by it it is gone they will never see it again <laughs> so you have spent a brand has spent lakhs and lakhs of crores making a tvc you spent crores making a tvc and putting it on facebook and any user once he has scrolled by it it is gone <laughs> yeah. he will never watch it again <laughs> yeah what a yeah. waste of production money and what a yeah. waste of media money massive waste of production money you spent crores yeah. making a video that a person is going to watch once and that too if he watches the entire thing once yeah what a fucking disaster when you are making content for platforms you do not need to spend crores unless you are a really big brand and you are sitting on billions of dollars where it doesn't mm-hmm. matter that you know okay i spent like this so much money making such a beautiful film i shot with this big director used this big celebrity wow what an amazing film i have made okay great but then that brand doesn't care like whether you know somebody actually went and bought the chocolate or went and bought the water or the or the soft drink because mm. you have billions of dollars you have made those billions of dollars now it, mm. it's only about telling your brand story or telling a story in an interesting way and that's all you care about that i as a brand made this amazing story whether it converted mm. whether people bought the chocolate it doesn't matter to you my god who would have the luxury of saying that if i don't see how i mean a cadbury ad which you know cost like probably a crore and a half to make did they even sell chocolates for the crore and a half by making that ad that feels so sad that maybe we shouldn't even talk about it pepsi makes a commercial with salman khan ah. and salman khan who alone would have spent 2 and a half to 3 crores or maybe even more paying salman khan they would have spent another 1 and a half 2 crores making the television commercial featuring salman khan so already 6 crores have spent earning another 5 to 6 crores getting people to watch that ad of salman khan so in total yeah. you have spent 10 crores on a salman khan ad technically mm. yeah like you correctly said i mean without naming anyone the fact is that a lot of stuff gets shared which one would think is only being made and shared for the purposes of kudos on linkedin 
and yeah, for the social, social media really likes good. that's why i said social media likes and 100 people talking saying like wow what a beautiful ad yeah, is not yeah. is not converting anything for the brand exactly and you get 10 whatsapp messages saying what a cool ad man and that's great for the ego and also what a cool ad is largely happening between advertising and marketing circles only there is an ad that goes up on facebook and some creative director made it or whatever and he's like check out this amazing new piece of work we've made and they're only advertising people commenting saying wow 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 and those advertising types are by the way not buying your product they're only saying wow do you want to talk about your favorite digital campaigns and i'm most happy for you to talk about your own campaigns as well it'll be lovely you just no, talk I mean, about which are your favorite digital campaigns and why or good or great digital campaigns and why do you consider them so i think you know some of the great digital campaigns are, i would say in the recent times are ones which have definitely used the platform very very interestingly one of the campaigns which i really really like is what pringles did on tiktok and they created this entire thing called play with pringles and they, it was an entire ugc campaign i'll send you all these links that you can use later but it's basically what the brand did is they made a campaign which is where and especially when you think of ugc you know when a brand has to think of ugc you have to think of a way where you're going to make it very easy for the consumer to do something as well as participate in something that uses if you're using your product and some how can i use my product how the consumer can use my product in an interesting way which is easy as well as the content that i get in will be different from various people also like a few years ago there was this campaign done by two web chatney for swiggy they did this thing where it was called swiggy voice of hunger which was very interesting where they actually used the voice feature of the instagram dm messaging and based on your voice your, it created a visual which looked like a piece of food so that got you know easy to do it's very easy to participate in and it's easy because you know the more and more people are trying it out and as more people try it out you figure out what are the different things you can create so when you use a platform for its features and make it easy for the consumer to participate it drives a lot of participation and a lot of engagement another brand which another one which i really really liked was in fact what uh, cadbury did using sharukh khan i i found it very very similar to a campaign uh, done in new zealand a few years ago for this company called asb where they featured the new zealand black caps the entire new zealand black caps rugby team and the mechanism was exactly the same as what cadbury did with sharukh khan so the both campaigns are very very similar but that's a great use of the platform and a great use of the celebrity and how people use a platform to tell a story so that's something that i really yeah. really like another one that i yes. really liked last year was the zoom virtual background contest the whole thing of everybody was getting on virtual calls there were people some people using google yeah. meet some yeah. people using zoom how do you stand out amongst all this clutter and get people to end up using zoom or people using zoom you know to have a lot more engagement on their work calls so basically yeah. what they did is they came up with this whole thing where you can add different cool backgrounds versus having your boring background like the one that i have right now and they open it up to a lot of users so what ended up happening is a lot of people participated and end up using those backgrounds on their calls which actually brings the popularity back to zoom and gets people to end up using that platform so it was very very interesting another very interesting campaign that i really quite liked was what the new york public library did with instagram where they felt that you know people were not coming to the library and reading a lot of books so they they realized that a lot of people enjoy a lot of short form content on instagram and therefore right. they created this whole series of instagram novels which was highly in- engaging as well as a great user of a platform so basically yeah. in just a scroll you can read a synopsis or a snapshot of a novel so it's literally wow. a novel in a instagram format a brand is customizing their content to suit what the platform is known for and i think that's what makes your idea a lot bigger Yes, I really like that example because in this case New York Public Library I would imagine would also be considered like a dinosaur for yes. the young kids. I mean who considers now going to a library issuing a book and reading it yeah. at home because we are all consuming content and short snackable content we're consuming yeah. on the mobile. It's a great way of building a connect with books again. So yes. that's fantastic and you know to the point that you earlier made on the Cadbury's ad or the Cadbury's campaign being copied from New Zealand yes i'm a great fan of copying by the way i'm a great fan of copying i believe copying also requires intelligence and i always say this to all my clients that if we can copy right copy intelligently then that's a far better no thing to do no idea is 100% unique there is a certain device there is a certain hmm. tech 
or there is a certain way you use a certain medium to tell a certain story. Now, New Zealand Black Cap said their story using this device in this way. You use the device in the same way, but you use Shah Rukh Khan. You know, now Shah Rukh Khan is obviously 100 times bigger than New Zealand Black Caps, even though New Zealand is a very small population. But when you yeah. applied, you've applied that methodology and taken that onto the almost the effect of the fact that small businesses that never had access to a celebrity now will have access to a celebrity. You have opened up the mechanism for it to be used by billions of people versus it being used by just 1,000 or 20,000 people in our New Zealand. Fantastic. Okay, now I have another controversial question to ask and I don't know if this is actually true because each side argues it as what is considered favorable for them. I don't know how much of the numbers to believe. But now in the new age, we say, Karan, that digital can be used to build reach. There was a time when we used to say, Dekho, you must have digital as part of your plan because you get higher engagement on digital and you can reach your audience in a more focused fashion. Yes. TV tends to be more of a, you know, carpet bombing strategy, no matter what. But today they're saying that digital can be used to build reach as well. When I say today, I'm saying even the last five years. Now yes. help me understand this. If digital can be used to build reach, then how do I look at spends between TV and digital? Of course, one can't write off TV. There is no way that one yes. can write off TV. TV does have very large audiences and it remains as the number one watched medium. But how do I use digital intelligently to be able to build reach without spending a bomb? See, that's actually a wrong question. <laughs> See, because you use a platform, like I was saying, for what the platform is. Now, you can mm -hmm. definitely, because there are billions of users on YouTube and people are consuming YouTube every day, you mm -hmm. can definitely use YouTube or Facebook for reach because you will get that reach because there are those numbers of people. And also with digital, you can get into a lot more sharper targeting with by saying that, you know, only SECA in a breach candy Bombay is watching this ad or only SECA in South Delhi is watching this ad. You can actually target a lot sharper like that. But when mm -hmm. an ad plays on YouTube as an unskippable ad, like you said, you are targeting the user, you are getting that reach, but the consumer is already annoyed at your brand because the consumer is like, this brand has hampered my experience. So they're like, I have to wait for it to, you know, something. Or the user will mute his phone. Or the user yeah. will take his phone and keep it on the side like that. Or if he's on a desktop and the ad is playing, then he might mute the ad and open another tab and go through something else while the ad continues playing. Every user, including ourselves, you and me, even the yeah. advertiser that is putting up his ad on YouTube, Including right. him, when he is watching content on YouTube, he also has 20 hacks on how to avoid an ad. Hmm. If you're using it yeah. for reach, then that's what it is. That's all you're getting. People are seeing your ad. Now, are they actually seeing your ad? Are they avoiding your ad? You do not know that. The back end will tell you, this ad was reached and shown to 500,000 people. How many of those 500,000 people actually saw the ad where they closed the ad and went to another tab? That you don't know. On TV, right. the user can join the channel. But on YouTube, the user has to wait to watch the content that they searched for. And when mm -hmm. you use digital versus TV, you get a lot more versus reach. You get the possibility of creating some kind of engagement where the user can maybe click on the ad or engage with the ad. You can get information from the user like whether they're interested in the ad, whether they like the ad, whether they want to submit their contact information. You can do a lot more. Therefore, I feel like brands need to do a lot more by putting up these videos or their stuff on Facebook or YouTube because you can actually drive that participation. You can drive a call to action. You can drive a user to do something. You should do, you should add that additional layer versus just like, this is my ad and now watch it. So it's a missed opportunity. Even on TV, when there is an ad that I don't like, then I'll get up at that time. Let's say on IPL, I'm, I'm watching the match, yes. but there are a number of ads in the commercial breach, which I don't want to watch. I don't yes. like, I'm sick of watching again and again. I will utilize that time to attend to whatever has to be attended to in the kitchen or I might just go to the loo or I might make a call in that time or I might quickly send out an email. Like right now, IPL mm -hmm. is going on. And uh -huh. you know, for IPL, for one of my clients, I'm designing an Instagram filter. And the client is obviously is asking me like, how will I get more people to use this filter? And that's where you come in and tell your brand story using the filter versus telling your brand story using a TVC. Like supposing the filter is, an, it's a filter of a helmet, okay? Now, when you use this filter on Instagram, you can record a video of yourself with the filter on. 
okay the brand could actually take this video with the filter on and use it as their brand video on facebook and on instagram and tell people want to use this filter click on this link you're saying that they can do that on tv no they can do that on tv while they can do that on tv they can definitely do that on facebook and on instagram as well huh. what happens huh. is that the person watching that video gets lured in by wanting to use that filter from your brand storytelling you're driving the user into an experience when the user comes in experience is that on the platform a they are spending a lot more time with your brand b they are sharing that experience that the brand gave them with 20 of their friends which is happening organically without you spending a single rupee the beauty of digital is to give the user an experience do not use digital as a display medium you can use it as a display medium but if you use it as a display medium that's all you will get views do views lead to conversion they do not do experiences lead to conversion yes they do very well said fantastic fantastic now tell me in the context of categories like bfsi or high yeah. involvement products like a car i don't yeah. buy a car just like that right you know would i go to a digital agency and say that the short formats can still be used to educate i mean if i'm selling a car then how can i best use digital you know do formats like memes short formats for example when i think of digital i'm always thinking of 10 seconds or less now yes. in that 10 seconds or less if i am a mutual fund if i am a car if i am an insurance company if i am let's say a b2b company logistics company would i think of short format would i think of digital and if yes then how do i best make use of it so i tell you you know honestly even if you look at digital today i mean in general consumer attention spans are dropping massively earlier it was 30 seconds then it became 20 now it is 10 and it is in fact even shorter and less if you go into where consumers i mean not just consumers i'm saying any human being <clears throat> today is largely spending a lot of their time is you're constantly on whatsapp you're whatsapping friends you're whatsapping family or whatsapping work colleagues and in all your whatsapp chats or whatsapp groups the the only thing that gets largely shared is not advertising it's memes gifs jokes forwards all of these are the things that are getting shared largely and the, all of these things have either a massive sense of humor or some major blooper going down or something so funny that you're like oh my god this has to be shared it's so shocking that you end up sharing it and all of this stuff that you end up sharing in your social media groups or in your groups with your friends on whatsapp is stuff which is in the shorter formats their gifs their memes their jokes because that's what engages that's what's light hearted that's what gets somebody's attention so if a brand really wants to get you know get attention grab you want to grab somebody's attention then you have very few seconds to grab their attention in and gifs and memes are short format content that is literally created with the sole purpose of grabbing attention that's all its purpose is is to grab attention and i feel as a brand whether you you know if yeah. you're a boring category especially like a yeah. financial product anyways the consumer is like every any time if you are going about your day and you get a call from a random number and you pick up the phone and like hello i'm calling from sbi mutual funds and would you like to invest in mutual funds you instantly you cut the call you need because you don't want to go through that but if the same story was sent to you in the form of a meme or a gif and some friends of yours shared it you might laugh about it you might share it with three more people but at least you are engaging with the brand and therefore you know if a consumer on seeing basically if a consumer sees a gif or a meme he has a slight chuckle he has a laugh you know there is a higher yeah. chance that the consumer will yeah. forward the same within their peer groups yeah so if you have a ad for a mutual fund versus you have a meme for a mutual fund there is a higher chance that the meme for the mutual fund will get shared and a really low chance that the ad will get shared because you share an ad even in a whatsapp group with your 10 friends you are like are ye kya ad bech rahe nobody is going to watch the ad but people will watch the meme share the meme maybe right create three more memes of their own or suggest what else the memes could be you've got in pers- a person involved in the brand storytelling versus the person wanting to ignore the brand storytelling fantastic fantastic <laughs> I think one thing for brands to know is that if they want to really own digital or win at digital, they need to make the user's experience of the web better and easier. How do I make the user have a great experience on social media or on digital by not interrupting the experience that they're already having? 
I think uh, something that I would like to cover is the fact that, uh, like I was saying, that you know, short format is here to stay. And a lot of, uh, like I was telling you earlier, that if a brand has, if it's a big brand, a really big brand, and you're already sitting on like billions of dollars, then it doesn't really matter. And I mean, it, of course, it matters that you're wondering where you're burning all this media money or burning all this money, and why is there no conversion? But mid-sized brands, you know, mid-sized brands that want this conversion, that need the conversion, so that they get the funding, they need the conversion so that they can you know, advertise better or build their brand. They need to use digital and social and all these platforms purely for what they are known for or what they can do to bring that conversion, to tell that story in an interesting way. And a lot of brands, you know, want to tell a story. Like if you have, like give you an example, like a brand has, you know, like you take a headphone, say you take a headphone or you take a mobile phone. A mobile phone will have 20 features. Any brand, what they will do is like, you know, they make one TVC, a 30 seconder or a 40 seconder. And at the end of the TVC, you'd have a product window and they saying, is product made? Ye hai, ye hai, ye hai, ye hai, ye hai. They are like T20 features you're trying to tell in one 40 seconder. Any consumer watching it is like, okay, now they, maybe this is not for me. But if you broke down each of those features or even any of your brand storytelling, you bring down all your features into multiple 10 seconders or multiple 5 seconders, you are sh- getting using your targeting in a lot sharper way. Your content, your advertising content is contextualized to different users and what they are looking for. Therefore, you can create a lot more sharper targeting as well as, you know, speak to consumers in what they are interested in versus what you want to tell them. Fantastic. And one last thing, Karan, I want to ask you, you know, since digital is a medium that can be used very effectively, even to target different geographical segments, there are brands that have very intelligently used campaigns. For example, in my time itself, you know, Pepsi did this campaign where they were doing the partnering with food. Now, what was it called? The increase consumption campaign or I forget what it was called anyway but they were pairing Pepsi with the regional cuisine so somebody yes. watching in Goa would see you know Pepsi paired with Goa yes. prawns somebody yes. watching from Hyderabad would see Pepsi paired with Chetinard and so on talk to yeah. me a little about that about how digital can be intelligently used to have multiple creatives for sure. multiple purposes or multiple audiences or multiple geographies which is something that you cannot do with TV unless you have shitloads of money. Of course. (laughs) You know, the very interesting and that's the kind of the best part of digital is because you can use very sharp targeting and sharp targeting. You can actually have a different storyline, which is scripted for a different audience. And that's also what I was trying to say in my earlier point, which is, for example, a housewife in South India may have different interests versus a housewife in South Bombay versus that housewife in South Delhi. And therefore, you can actually script and create different messaging or different stories which appeal to these different sets of audiences when you use short formats. If a brand has to make 25 seconders that talk to 20 different women, you are actually able to you know get interest from 20 different people versus running the same story for all 20 of them. And I think that's where the, you know, the geography angle comes in a lot stronger as well as the fact that you can actually, you're using your brand's marketing budget a lot smarter. You're actually saying that, okay, there are 10,000 women in South India and for them, I will create this set of communication. There are 100,000 women in South Delhi and for them, I am creating this set of communication. And also keeping that communication within 10 seconds is getting that person engaged by what is relevant and what is of meaning to them. Versus running one creative asset and hoping that everybody will have the attention for the same asset. I hope you liked my show. And if you did, please do consider subscribing. I also have a YouTube channel by the same name, Marketing by Vani. Please do check that out too. Thank you. (laughs) How badly could you screw up one line? So I did screw up. My YouTube channel is called Marketing with Barney, the same name as this podcast. 